Hey, Radians here. In this video, we delve into a React masterclass to build a visually appealing schedule page for your productivity app. We'll leverage actual data to craft interesting visualizations all without depending on external component libraries. You'll discover that by decomposing the complex UIs into smaller components, the task becomes way easier. While the code for this specific application is in a private repository, all the reusable components can be found in the React Kit repository. The schedule page at Increaser aims to assist remote workers in optimizing their daily routine for enhanced health and productivity. It comprises two main sections. Scheduler, this section includes essential events every user should plan, such as wake up time, first meal, and end of the workday. Statistics, here we provide an analysis of the user's previous workdays, including average work blocks, total work hours on weekdays in weekends, and the start and end times of the workday. This feature enables users to compare their intended schedule with their actual work patterns. By integrating these sections, the schedule page serves as a valuable tool for remote workers striving for a balanced and efficient daily routine. Our code models the schedule as a record where each key is a day moment type representing various daily events like wake up at, start work at, first meal at, etc. The value of each key indicates the means elapsed since midnight. For instance, a wake up time at 7 a.m. is denoted by a wake up at field with a value of 420 minutes. Additionally, we use a day moment short name record to map day moments types to concise names suitable for UI display. The day moment step variable sets the time increment for scheduling, allowing users to adjust events in 30 minute steps. Lastly, the day moments default values record establishes default times for each scheduled event when creating a new user's profile. Given our use of DynamoDB as a database, it's advantageous to maintain a flat data structure. Consequently, the user type extends the day moments type. This approach simplifies updates, as modifying a day moment entails a standard update operation on a user, eliminating the need for an additional endpoint in our API. Let's begin with the Manage Schedule component. This component aims to offer users a clear visualization of their events and enable them to manage their schedule effectively. We employ the element size of very component to accommodate both small and medium sized screens. It provides the dimensions of the wrapper element, guiding us in choosing the appropriate layout. For small screens, a flexbox with column direction is utilized, minimizing the spacing between events for optimal display. On medium-sized screens, we implement a CSS grid for a more structured presentation. The Manage Day Moment component handles the Day Moment prop, which include the event's name and accompanying minimum and maximum parameters. These parameters are instrumental in defining a specific time range for an event. For example, in a start work event, the minimum will be set to the wake up time and the maximum to the work finishing time. The container of this component showcases an icon associated with the event, the event's abbreviated name, and the time in formatted manner. Upon user interaction, such as clicking on the event, a dropdown appears presenting various time options. Selecting a new time from this dropdown will promptly update the schedule to reflect this change. For positioning time options and facilitating keyboard selection, we leverage the floating UI library within the Use Floating Options hook. This hook sets the dropdown appearance via Use Floating and orchestrates navigation between the options with Use List Navigation. The Use Dismiss hook enables closing options using the Escape key while use click allows for toggling options on a click event. The seamless integration of these functionalities is achieved through the use interactions hook. To further enhance convenience for the use floating options consumers, we provide upgraded versions of the get reference props, get floating props, and get options props functions. For example, get options props enhance accept an on select callback and incorporates both click and enter key handlers. Also initially challenging to navigate, getting a hand of the floating UI library unlocks its potential for creating complex user interfaces. When options are presented, they encapsulated within the options container component. This component is designed to mirror the reference element in both color and width, ensuring a cohesive visual experience. Within options container, we render the time options. We alter options background and text color when in an active state enhancing user interaction feedback. To emphasize the currently selected option, we employ the outline component positioned absolutely. 
This component is frequently used due to its effectiveness in delineating the boundaries of an element. The absolute outline function is pivotal in positioning the outline relative to the parent element while also allowing for offset adjustment to the outline itself. Upon user selection of a new time, the use update user mutation hook is utilized. It performs an optimistic update, creating the illusion of real-time changes, and concurrently calls an API endpoint to update the user's schedule in the database. For more insight into streamlining backend development in a monorepository tab, refer to this video. The time distance component is used to display the time duration between two events. It accepts a time value in minutes and a direction as props. This component is housed in a Flexbox container, which expands to occupy the full available space and centers its children. The Flexbox direction is determined by the direction prop. Up and down set a column layout, while left and right create a row layout. Additionally, the dashed line component, a simple div with dashed borders, is used. Children icons are utilized to create arrows pointing to the specified direction. To enhance users' engagement and practicality, the page includes a schedule review component adjacent to the scheduler. This component functions as a checklist for maintaining a healthy schedule. Each item on the list is backed by scientific evidence for its health benefits. Key examples include practicing 16 hours of intermittent fasting and ensuring 8 hours of sleep. The schedule check item component presents the name of a habit and displays a check icon when its value is set to true. For styling, we employ CSS helpers such as round and same dimensions to create a circular element and center content for converting it into a flexbox element with centered content. The color of the element is determined using the getColor function which retrieves the appropriate color from the theme. As Syncreator primarily functions as a time tracker, numerous time conversions are essential. The ConvertDuration function is particularly useful in this context. It takes three parameters, a value, the unit to convert from, and the unit to convert to. Utilizing a record of each time unit in milliseconds, the function facilitates seamless conversion between different time units. In the second section of the page, the Sets Explorer component is featured. This component showcases numeric statistics at the top, followed by a visualization of work sessions below. For this report, the Sets Explorer Y axis is used to display time labels, while Set Explorer Days present work sessions grouped by days. We wrap everything within a Sets Explorer provider that will provide sets organized in days a start and end hour for the visualization and a boolean indicating whether today should be included in the report. To respect users' preference for today's inclusion in the report, we store the value in local storage. To learn more about a bulletproof implementation behind the use persistent state hook, refer to this video. The first set in the dataset is used to ascertain the start date of the report. By calculating the time difference between the start of today and the first day, we determine the report's duration in days. For the y-axis of our report, it's crucial to identify the earliest start hour and the latest end hour of workdays. Additionally, to effectively utilize our context within a React component, I employ a utility function named createContextHook. This function acts as a wrapper around the useContextHook with added functionality to throw an error if the contact is not provided. We begin by presenting the Sets Explorer stats component, which features a title indicating the number of dates encompassed in the report, as well as a toggle option to include the current day. We showcase the statistics using a CSS grid layout implemented with the Uniform Column Grid component. This component is designed to ensure uniform read for the content within. Given its frequent use case, creating a component that simplifies interaction with CSS grid is valuable. To display a statistic, we utilize the statistic panel component, which presents a title in a smaller font while accentuating the value. If data is unavailable, it displays a dash in place of a formatted value. Given the availability of numerous helpers to manage work sessions and time, calculating data like the average start of a workday or the average amount of work on a weekend becomes quite straightforward. The most challenging aspect is the visualization of sessions. 
Given the potential for numerous days in the report, fitting all content without a horizontal scroll becomes impractical. To address this, we ensure the y-axis remains fixed while enabling horizontal scrolling. This is achieved by employing a flexbox with row direction and setting overflow x auto on the container of the sets explorer days. To align the y-axis accurately with time labels and daily content, we use a set of predefined constants in a record named sets explorer config. Specifically, we retrieve the hour height value from this configuration and multiply it by the total number of hours to determine the height of the time labels container. The day time labels component plays a key role in displaying time labels alongside daily events represented as small icons. This component is not limited to the schedule page, it's also utilized on the dashboard and focus pages to create a timeline. This component calculates the number of labels required based on the start and end hours, ensure the even distribution along the y-axis. When positioning an element absolutely, there are only top, left, right, and bottom properties. There is no center option for this purpose. To address this, we use the position absolutely center horizontally component. This component accepts a top property to set the vertical position and an optional full width property to decide if the element should spend the full width of its parent. We achieve the centering effect by strategically using nested divs with absolute position. The sets explorer days component presents days and their corresponding work blocks along with a chart that highlights variations in work hours. Given the horizontal scrolling feature and the days being sorted in ascending order, the component is designed to automatically scroll to the chart's end. This functionality is accomplished using the use effect hook where the scroll left property of the container is set to match the container's scroll width. The Sets Explorer Day View component features a header displaying the date and a weekday with work blocks forming the main content. Work sessions are organized into blocks, defined as collections of sessions separated by no more than 15 minutes. Targeting 19 minute blocks has proven effective in enhancing productivity. After organizing sessions into blocks, we iterate over them to display each Sets Explorer work block component. This component employs a familiar technique of absolute positioning to add an outline. It then iterates over each session within the block for rendering. Given the known start and end times of the timeline, calculating the height and top position of each block becomes straightforward. To illustrate the correlation between the structure of the blocks and total work hours, we incorporate a small chart. The width of this chart container is determined based on our configuration settings. We then compute an array representing the total hours, which serves as a data for the chart. This data array is subsequently passed to the spline chart component. We use an SVG element comprising two paths, the first for drawing a curve line and the second for adding a background beneath it. This is where ChatGPT becomes available. Although it might not write the entire component flawlessly at first, understanding the building blocks of the problem is beneficial. Then you can request specific functions like calculate control points or create path from the AI, which would be more tedious to deduce independently. And that's all. If you found this video valuable, please like and subscribe. Become an effective 10x programmer with my productivity app at increaser.org.